The New Jersey Department of Military and Veterans Affairs welcomes you to a discussion on the rollout and implementation of the electronic records management system within our network of Veterans Memorial Homes. Today we are at the Veterans Memorial Home at Menlo Park with Mike Yanata, the Assistant CEO. How broad is electronic records management and what all does it encompass? It is as it sounds. It's all of the, all of the records for the residents, but in an electronic format. So rather than a paper medium, an electronic medium. So, I mean, it's the entirety of the medical record. Can you talk about the relative timeline and perhaps some of the challenges that you might face? Well, you know, we're, we're doing something uh, that's very phased but very intelligent here. Leadership has come up with a really great approach uh, in that we're going to start with some notes, uh, and that'll be early October. Uh, by early November, we'll be doing our assessments. You know, by, by early December, all departments will be doing all their assessments. And that, that begins the real free flow of information. So by the end of the year, you're, you're about fully implemented. The only thing left to do is MedPass early next year. Uh, and, and that's something that we're already starting to put the parameters together and already starting to work on. I definitely want to talk about the transition from being paper and hybrid to digital. Can you tell me about um, how this came about and the process that you guys are going through? Now, uh, the Mava leadership had decided on the product uh, uh, that we're using. It's a uh, Net Solutions, uh, and we have been going through a process of teaching everybody how to use the computers, how to how the functionality works, how to how to use electronic medical records. Reviewing with the staff uh, who've used other medical records in the past, their computer usage, uh, starting with some very basic things like their their telephones. You know, how do you send a text, uh, and showing them how they they have the experience already with the technology. Uh, and then going through step by step and teaching everybody how to use the computer uh, in, in such a fashion that it'll be more efficient for them and more accurate. What is the importance of switching over to a more modern approach? You know, interoperability is the first thing that comes to my mind, you know, allowing us to not only view medical records in real time, but also be able to, to assess, you know, how somebody's performance based on the uh, medical record. How are we passing medications? How accurate are we? Uh, being able to get reports out on things like that, be able to look at trends over time, be able to look at trends in real time too. So if we have residents uh, uh, who, who have needs that are developing, things like uh, further assistance with uh, activities of daily living or increased need for, for monitoring due to fall risk. We can see these things now in real time and then be able to actually use them to, to make sure that we're putting in interventions in place to prevent things from happening. From two different standpoints, one from the employee standpoint and one from the resident standpoint, how is this going to affect everyone? Uh, because there's definitely two sides to this, right? There truly are. And at, at its core too, electronic medical records are communication tools. And, and at its true core, by having this enhanced communication, by being able to see things in real time, by being able to understand things, by making sure things are extremely clear. You know, there's that old joke about doctor's handwriting. You no longer have that issue when everything is typed. Uh, so it makes things much clearer, much more accurate. It allows the employees to operate in such a fashion that they know everything is to, to a standard that they can see clearly and understand very easily. And it doesn't change from person to person. Interpretation is much clearer. You know, the computer tells you things. You can hover over things and actually see information as you're going through it. It does a phenomenal job making sure the employees have a thorough understanding of what medications they're passing, what time they're due, what interventions are needed for what person at what time. Now, from a resident standpoint of view, it's also the ability to get them accurate information when they ask for it on demand. It's something that you, if I ask you one question and I ask somebody else the same question, you may get a slightly different answer. This doesn't allow for that. It shows you exactly what the answer is. You know, if they ask a question, you know, what was my mother's BUN and creatinine? You can look it up right away and see it in real time. There's no finding the chart, going, look, going through it, going looking for it. It's all right there at your fingertips. So it makes for a much better customer experience too. You mentioned someone inquiring about their mother or someone who has been given permissions to support that parent or relative in their care. Uh, from someone outside looking in, what else does electronics records management do for the home's operations? So it's more accurate information, you know, and sometimes nurses uh, try to be very cautious. So they would rather say to a family member, let me check and find out. Now it's a matter of calling it up and looking at it right there on the screen, right in front of them. And they know the answer of whatever question they're being asked immediately. So, you know, what time did my father go to bed last night? Look up and see what time is documented. It, here it is right here. It says 1015. 
You know, I mean, it's that quick and, and it's consistent. You know, there's no ask one nurse one question, ask the same nurse, you know, ask a different nurse the same question and get a slightly different answer. There's, there's no room for that anymore because all the answers are right there, all in one medium, one format that everyone's easy to understand. How is it being received by the home staff members? One of the first things I did is I went around and I asked all the employees, if anybody hasn't used a computer, please come forward. I'd, I'd like to sit down with you and teach you how to use a computer. You know, we'll start from just the very basics and get to as complicated as you want to get. Not a single person came forward. As a matter of fact, the feedback that I've gotten from the nurses has been, it's about time, we're excited, we can't wait for this to start, we know this is gonna be a great change for us, we know it's gonna make our work easier. If I were to go to a computer and I was to open a file, what would I see? So when you, when you open it up, you're gonna see a picture of the person that, that you're going to care for. You're going to see their demographic information, some basic information about them, you know, birth date, allergies though. What's really nice about electronic information though is the speed at which you can see it and the consistency. Every screen looks the same. And what happens is the nurses get to learn where all of the different things are on the screen, where all the different vital information is. So their last vital signs are right there. If somebody had a fever last night on the last shift, there's no question what their temperature was and you can take their temperature again. It helps you to make decisions clinically. You know, not based just on science, but also based on the art of nursing, understanding who that person is because all that information is there for you. And you can talk to the person, ask them, well, how are you feeling right now? And if they had pain the last shift, you can see that they had pain. And you're able to ask them, how is your pain now? So it's pretty amazing. If you're the person in the bed, you know, the nurse is going to have a lot of information that right now they have to flip through several pages to find, whereas an electronic medium, it's right there, right in front of them, at their fingertips. What happened to all those paper records? Now, paper records are still here and retained as per policy and as per regulation. However, what has to happen is we go through each individual, each, each person, each medical record, and we make sure that all of that information that's there in the paper medium is entered in the computer, cataloged properly. You know, uh, the best example is, is when we start to look at medications, every single medication will be reviewed, make sure that it's current, make sure that the time is current, make sure that, the, that it's a medication that is good for the person. And we ask the doctors to review them again, just to make sure that the, they want to continue with that medication. It's reviewed by the pharmacy. The times are all put in by the nurses and then reviewed again by the consultant pharmacist. So it's a, it's a lot of the checks, double checks, triple checks, make sure that everything is accurate uh, and make sure that we're you know, ready on time uh, that, that, that's what that looks like. What do you see as the biggest hurdle for your conversion process? You know, the biggest, the biggest hurdle is always the human fear of the unknown. You know, everybody's anxious to do things quicker, better, faster, easier, but when they don't fully understand things, you know, it takes us some time to explain them so that people are comfortable. Once they get comfortable, they're off and running. You know, but that's always the biggest hurdle is just making sure that they understand why we're doing it, what we're doing, and making sure they understand that, you know, we're, we're, we're not asking you to write anything differently. We're just asking you to type it instead of write it with a pen. You know, and that, that's always the biggest hurdle. It's just once we get over that fear, once the staff understands it, they take off. So in the old days, you would have one file for the resident per se. So if one wanted to look at it, that meant if another person wanted to look at it, the second person would have to track down the first person. That's absolutely correct. We were just having a meeting this morning and I needed to see the care plans of about nine different people and right here from my desk and look it right up. Nope, here's my care plan. This is what we're doing. Okay, this is good. You know, and we can sit here and we can have real time conversations and whether I'm doing it from my desk and, and, and a nurse is doing it from the nurse's desk and you know, another nurse is at a different desk, we can all be looking at the same thing and working on them in real time. So when someone enters something, let's say I'm a nurse, I make a notation. Does someone have to approve it? What's the process? A lot of things depend on scope of practice. So say when a CNA is documenting on ADLs, you know, that'll be in their section for CNAs and ADLs. When a nurse writes a nurse's note, that'll be in there as a nurse's note, right? It's no different than a handwritten way. Uh, you know, and the electronic medical records follow the same regulations as, as handwritten medical records. Uh, the difference is, so let's just say that, that a note is written and we want to write an addendum to it. We're able to do that in real time. We're able to just call that right up and write that in. It dates, stamps, and times every note and so we know exactly who wrote it, what time they wrote it, what, you know, and, and you can track these kind of things too. So, you know, let's look at, you know, care planning. When we, when we add a new intervention to the care plan, we're able to add that intervention and then make sure that it's communicated out immediately so that any other nurse can look at it right away and see it right away. What is an ADL? 
activities of daily living. So that that covers things like getting dressed, bathing, eating, things that things that you would normally do that you know every everyday people take for granted. As we age, you need more and more assistance with that. You know, and if you think about it, that is really the number one thing that we do here is help everybody support them in such a manner so that they can be out to enjoy whatever it is that they want to enjoy. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, about your schooling, and about your background? So I'm kind of an unusual case here. I, I grew up here in New Jersey. I, I'm from a small town called Berkeley Heights. I'm the son of a, of a, of a veteran uh, and a long family of veterans, uh, you know, people who served in Vietnam, uh, World War II as well. Uh, and, you know, the Veterans Home is someplace I've always wanted to work. Uh, however, I wasn't always a nurse. When I, when I first got out of high school, I went to trade school. I'm a, I'm a journeyman tool and die maker. Uh, so engineering background, uh, which kind of explains the computer uh, adaptation. I, you know, I learned CNC coding uh, back when we had to do it all manually before computers put it, put it together. So I go back a little ways. Uh, I went to nursing school in the early 2000s uh, because, you know, at the time, uh, as a machinist and master tool maker, you know, we were getting laid off and, you know, it was getting harder and harder to find a consistent work. So I went into healthcare thinking, you know, this will be much more consistent, a much better way to take care of my family. Uh, I fell in love with long-term care at about 2004. I used to work for JFK Hospital and, and after uh, a stint at JFK, I, I worked in some of their uh, long-term care uh, facilities and that, that's where I got, you know, I, I enjoyed seeing interventions work over time. You know, when you work in a hospital, you, you meet somebody on Monday, by Wednesday they've gone home, you, you never see them again. When you work in long-term care, you get to meet and get to really know people and get to see changes over time, get to really help them, you get to know their families, they become part of your family. You know, getting here to Menlo Park, I have worked in a number of different long-term care companies, some of them world-class, million-dollar companies, billion-dollar companies. And the care and service that we have here at Menlo Park is as good or better. I put it up against it any day of the week. You know, the things that I've found here, the things I've discovered, the caring that the staff has, the way that they know the residents and understand them, it's unbelievable. You know, and this has always, for me, just been a goal, just based on you know my, my father and, and all my uncles and aunts and my grandparents who, who all served. Uh, and now my son is, is going into the Army. Uh, so it's, it's, for me, it's very poetic to, to be here and, and to serve in this way. So I took a night shift job uh, as, a t as, a, as a machinist and went to LPN school all day long for a full year. Uh, after the end of that, uh, I worked as an LPN for about five or six years. Uh, that's where I did my stint in the hospital. Uh, and then after being an LPN for five or six years, I became an administrator for assisted living, uh, which was also an interesting, uh, interesting time for me. And then that's when I went back to, to get my first degree as a registered nurse, an associate's degree. Uh, and then uh, five years after being a, an associate's degree registered nurse, I went and got my bachelor's degree in nursing. That was Assistant Chief Executive Officer Mike Yanata at the Veterans Memorial Home at Menlo Park. On behalf of the New Jersey Department of Military and Veterans Affairs, we thank you for tuning in.